over the past two years, I sometimes hear a tone in either <coughs> ear, like a calibration tone. Um, it used to be frequent, and now not so often. What does this signify? One in the tafakkur, we ask that you always play salawats. If you're playing the salawat, playing Holy Qur'an and meditating, I think it would be very difficult to hear anything, any type of whisper that coming into the ear. This sense of, of speech is not something you physically hear through the ear. That's something else maybe trying to whisper to you, to talk to you. If you're doing it with the salawats and playing the salawats, you're not hearing that, you're actually trying to block out anything from physical hearing. This reality is about shutting down the physicality and opening your second level of hearing which is the hearing from your soul. As soon as you open the hearing from your soul, it's your lower conscience the reality of your soul that's in the body that begins to communicate with your higher conscience. The reality of your soul that's always in the heavens, always in Allah's protection and kept away from you. Your soul will begin to talk to you and give you your inspirations. Your inspirations, not wahi, what they call what? Inspiration? Ilham. Yeah. That your soul will give you your inspirations. And the soul is continuously trying to give out the inspirations but mankind is busy. They're running, 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 never stopping to hear. So it means that the real spiritual hearing is when they shut and they can hear through their soul. That they hear the guidance of their shaykh pushing their soul to speak to them. And the soul is speaking to you about yourself, you should be praying, you should make istighfar, you should be doing like this, you should be doing anything that the soul speaks about is based on being hard to yourself. If you ever hear a voice speaking to you about you were correct and the shaykh was wrong, that's shaitan. If you hear a voice talking to you about giving yourself credit and that you're a good person, the shaitan. Because the two, what they want, it's like you have to understand the flavor. The ego wants to always find something correct about the body because he's the one doing all the damage. So, no, 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 we're right, we're great, you're, you're a perfect guy, you're a per person. Everything is perfect. And it always wants to validate the self and, and say bad about everybody else. The, the soul when it inspires you, it tells you, you are wrong, you did wrong, you did bad. You say, how could I be? Man that's horrible, I can't do like that. That's from the soul because it wants to crush you. Anything that happened to you, the soul comes and tells you, Allah sent that to you, take it with your understanding and your faith. There's nothing for you to say back. So the soul, the soul is continuously helping us to be nothing. So then when Sayyidina Ibrahim was going to take Sayyidina Ismail, the soul comes out and gives a guarantee for Sayyidina Ibrahim, don't worry you find me to be patient. Means the reality and the haqqaiq of the soul is that it wants to come and give us the guidance of Allah the higher path, the higher way. Don't, don't, don't shake of this difficult order that coming, Allah wants something. And that's why we said that in this reality of Sayyidina Ibrahim, Sayyidina Ismail represents Maqam al ihsan Allah will make a reality of your soul to come out to assist you on your guidance. That this coordinates, this is what the soul wants. Don't listen to what your nafs is saying to answer back. You may get a heavy test in life and say, I want to now use my ability to come against a shaykh, come against a wali, come against anyone. So then they teach you, if you don't have that training now, they stay quiet, stay quiet. So that that reality can become a reality within the heart. So real hearing is through the subconscious, where you hear the consciousness and it begins to dress you, bless you. Different types of hearing and sounds are based on your training. If you're training in tafakkur and contemplation, they may begin to open up an alert system. 
An alert system is that when you've been trained in meditation and tafakkur, the connection with the shaykh is understood, you have a, an alarm system like ADT. Do they have ADT in Canada? Yeah. House alarm. It means Allah will wire you with an alarm system on all of their body openings everywhere. And as soon as a, 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 a being with incorrect intention enters your proximity, you hear a tremendous buzzing like all your energy is zzzz and very painful to ignore. A warning is coming that something's trying to enter into your field of protection. And that will be a different level of training for a student who's reached an understanding. They have a, a, a protection system that Allah put because the vibration of their energy is being elevated as a result of their perfected vibration. Anything of a lower and dirty frequency agitates that field of energy. This is coming in something dirty. So we said to before that it's like getting a battery, the 9 volt battery and test it on your tongue, it gives you like, ooh that hurt. That feeling is when an energy is trying to come around your body that's not at the cleanliness of your level. A dirty energy trying to hit a clean energy causes a shock in the energy and the vibration. Then later on that'll be training an energy how to defend the self, how to push all the negativities away, that's with the madad. That's why then the first level of tafakkur and meditation is just to contemplate, to begin to understand myself how to breathe, then to introduce my shaykh into the meditation. That I want to be with my shaykh, my heart to be connected with my shaykh, to, to feel the love and the presence that keep your nazar upon me always. I don't want to be in this world alone, I don't want to be left to my nafs for, the blink, for a blink of an eye. For Prophet asked Allah don't leave me to myself, my nafs for even a blink. How to avoid that is then to master the muraqabah and tafakkur. That I'm always in the presence of the shiukh, they're looking at me, watching me, I'm feeling their presence. Their nazar comes and begin to push away any type of negativity, any type of badness. They become like the, the, the light for the, the fly killer. You know you put that light on, every type of bad fly that comes to you and then it falls, falls. Because their light is guarding and, and all over you. When their light all over you, anything that comes into your field and goes down inshaAllah. The more stronger, stronger that light and love is, the stronger and stronger the field of energy and protection becomes, inshaAllah. <coughs> this question is related to distraction during meditation. Mm -hmm. During meditation, random people, neighbors start hitting the walls, making loud noise. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, because shaitan's not happy with you meditating. That if, if a person reaches to be a rijal and Allah grant them sincerity, they're the equivalent of 1,000 men on this earth. Men, women doesn't matter, it means a state of maturity. Shaitan's not interested in having a field of uh, people who are the power of a thousand people. So he's very interested in destroying any type of spiritual growth. As soon as you take a path, the shaitan that you had before will be fired and a new more advanced shaitan will be sent. So every level that you're improving, the shaitan is, is also being sent and changed to attack you in a different way, a more expertise version of that is coming. So it means he's not leaving the process, he's more trained in the understanding. That's why awliyaullah understand what he's trying to do to their servants. And that's why again following their guidance and following their naza, their spiritual vision understands and as a result of them taking their path with their shaykh, they know what these shaitan's trying, they know their system of how they're playing, inshaAllah. Sayyidi, during meditation we feel the heart heating up, how can we nourish it and keep it increasing? Keep doing the meditation. As soon as your heart begins to heat up, you're breathing, you're feeling the energy, all of these, these goodnesses, the zikr, that's good. Feel your heart, feel the energy, feel your heart, feel the energy and then you begin to feel your hands heating up and the back of your neck to heat up. Your hands when they become hot it's 
a good symbol that your heart is actually active. So warm and heated hands means they have a, a warm heart and heated, it's activated heart. Those are the hands also for healing, that when they touch something and make du'a that Allah through that energy and that qudrat they can begin to heal. But they don't want to do any healing now because they haven't trained in that. Anything you touch to heal will be transferred over to you. So it has to be very careful on, on how you heal. If, if there's a negative charge that causing a sickness for person and you're a positive hand, a positive person, as soon as you come and touch that negativity will come into you. So that's why they don't touch on people and they, they heal by stick or by some sort of separation between them and that energy and that they don't take it on to their person and the zikrs and trainings that they have is that any energy that does come becomes processed and as a result they can give out more light by that processing of taking in the negativity becomes like a fuel for their energy and as a result they give out light as a result of what's coming in. But that has to be trained and, and to understood at that level. So you know, what if they feel like a pain in the heart during meditation or the chest? That's energy. Any type of energy that's coming is going to find a, a conflict because of the good and the, and the bad, the, the positive. Any type of energy that comes, if it's of a positive nature, any type of negative energy comes there could become a conflict of something that has to be cleansed out of the body or something that's around in the environment. Could be through the home, through the children, through anything that's around. So that energy has to be cleansed and just continue with that with your salawats and your energy and then you have to contact the shaykh if it's, it's, if it's continuing. If the energy is too strong and too negative then the zikrs will be weakened and lowered down so that not to have that. Okay, um, during meditation it feels like the body is gently moving but the body is not really moving at all, mm. is that normal? Yeah, the movement of the body or the sensation of movement is because the soul is moving. And actually this earth is moving at a tremendous speed, we just don't sense it. Once you enter into the spiritual realm you begin to sense many things, you be me me meditating and you feel like your body is collapsing and, and dying. Because as you're pulling your energy out and learn how to separate yourself from your physicality, the body enter like a state of death and just sort of collapsing upon itself. So then many different understandings begin to open as the person begins to meditate and, and contemplate. The main thing is that don't focus on these issues, don't focus on all of these minor issues, try to reach your goal. Your goal is that you want to enter into an ocean of power. The Ya Rabbi, dress me from your oceans of power, dress me from the oceans of power, that I'm nothing, I'm nothing and that I want to be with my shaykh. So one step is to learn the tafakkur and the contemplation, how to visualize the presence of the shaykh, how to keep that presence and then do your zikr and your awrads. Not so much about all the different sensations that we're feeling, just move through them, pay no attention to them. Whatever they show you in the spiritual world, pay no attention to it. But even within my annihilation I was annihilated. Many times they begin to meditate and the spiritual realm begins to open. You see somebody coming with a spiritual gift for you. Even in that meditation you just say, thank you very much and pay no attention to it. Whatever's coming to you keep annihilating yourself that you're nothing, you're nothing, you're nothing. Otherwise the nafs will begin to enter into that meditation and then it's all about thinking, I'm something, I got gifts, I got this, I got that and that's what has to be negated. That if you got a gift and you think it's coming from the spiritual realm that oh we're giving you a gift, we're giving you a light, we're giving you this to say, Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbi shukr I'm nothing, let me enter into your oceans of light Ya Rabbi and abdukul ajiz, I'm nothing, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi. And keep negating the self inshaAllah. Someone had just asked about visions. Hmm. How to keep them going. Yeah, pay no attention to them. Um, <clears throat> another question, Sayyidi. Um, is it okay to be in a state of meditation more constantly throughout the day while performing day to day activities, uh, slow, slowing down and be in the state of rabita with the shaykh? 
or does it have to be only in a quiet time, like after Asr or Tahajjud? Yeah, it's best to, to, to have a respect for that state. It means that's a state in which we are trying to keep a connection in a place that's clean, an environment that's right. When I'm about to make my namaz and my salah, I'm asking for meditation, I'm asking for support. When I'm about to sit and do my tafakkur, I ask for support. When I'm about to sit in the zikr, I ask for the meditation and support. I don't ask for meditation and support on the bus. Why? Why, why do you want all that energy to come? Why are you calling them to sit with you on a bus? That's one, it's not a nice adab. Two is if you start to bring those types of energy in a public forum, you'll carry all the energy of the bus. So whoever's on this bus, whatever type of craziness, whatever they're doing from any type of walk of life, all that energy will come onto the person and they begin to get sick and, and difficulties. Not in an airport, not in a bus, not on a mall. Those are not the places to, to meditate, those are places to, to go and then come out and take a wash and shower. And then when you're nice again back at home, then you sit and try to meditate because their presence comes. It's a reality that's coming and the more you treat it with respect and what we call ihtiram, with a tremendous respect, I'm about to meditate and these awliya inshaAllah are coming into this room, into this environment. I want to make it pleasing for them, I put beautiful fragrances, I put all, all this beautiful symbolic spiritual items I have. Because these awliya are coming, it becomes like a maqam. They're coming and they're praying, they're doing their worshipness there, inshaAllah. If you feel that you're in danger, then yeah, you make your madad. You feel something's wrong, some danger on the bus, immediately make your madad, you recite your madad, and their energy comes to again to protect and assist through that difficulty, inshaAllah. Is the who meditation done silently? Should we imagine Divine Light when we breathe in, um, entering our heart or stomach? Um, and is it the same breathing out? Yeah, the, the who is the strongest and that is a pushing of the sound. You can practice first with who. Once you become comfortable with the breathing, the breathing practice, then the next level is that it, it's actually silent. It's the push of the breath with the zikr in the heart. But that is, you have to sort of practice that, become like juggling, understand how to, how to make a zikr where you're pushing who in your heart and your breath is just pushing the sound of And they're pushing the zikr through their heart and the breath is coming out. But yeah, you make the, the zikr through the tongue and practicing in and out with that zikr of who inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basila Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.